My name is Amy Quinn. I'm the deputy mayor in Asbury Park. I was elected to the city council in 2013. I've been in Asbury Park for about 20 years. I came in the early 2000s. Uh, one of the reasons I came to Asbury was at that time you could kind of pick up a small place for not a tremendous amount of money. And there was a big gay community here that I wanted to be a part of. So I left Jersey City uh, where I was working for Child Protective Services and moved to Esbury Park. I was going to law school at night and um, became involved. Uh, the first commission I became involved in was the Environment and Shade Tree Commission. Uh, the chair of that is a, a man named Tom Pavinsky, who once you meet Tom, um, you don't just do one thing, you do tons of things for the community. So he was a wonderful person for me to um, come in contact with so early on when I moved here. But what we, we don't want to see is an Asbury Park where, where we had tumble leaves kind of going down Ocean Ave and Cookman Ave. And we want to ensure that the, the small business community in Asbury Park stays alive, both the retail and the restaurants and the arts. And some of the things we currently did was close down the street so retail could put their racks outside, our bookstore could put their books outside, and our restaurants could put their tables outside. And we also waived all of the cafe fees for any of this, both throughout the entire town. So if you were on Main Street or the waterfront or downtown, we waived all of, all of the cafe fees. Um, you know, I think we're all worried about the business community in Asbury Park. I think it's, it's you know, one of the backbones here. Uh, making sure that our business community is up to speed on the grants that have been coming down the pike. So, for example, freeholder director Tommy Arnone came to our business committee meeting to talk about the $10,000 grant that uh, the county was doing. We've had state representatives talking about the grants that are coming down from the state. And even from a health perspective, we were one of the first towns to get a symptomatic testing for free. So, you know, you didn't have to be an Asbury resident. So if employees were not feeling well, they could go get tested um, and ensure that, you know, they were well and that they were not, you know, going to be infect anybody else. So all of the things that we've done, I think we're going to try to continue to do. We're going to continue um, the closing of the streets. We also provided businesses with some, uh, you know, canopy restrictions and requirements, heating restriction and requirements. And what I think got lost a little bit during this pandemic from the state is the fact that uh, when you're a short town, you have a small window to maximize the amount of money you're going to make because in December, January, February, March, you know, you're not packed. So Memorial to Labor Day was the period of time that we really needed to maximize the amount of people coming to Asbury safely um, and visiting our restaurants. And, and, and to that point, we actually challenged the governor on indoor dining and providing guidelines. And it was never about immediately putting people indoors or doing anything unsafe. It was really about motivating him to provide our businesses with some, some way to know what's, what's kind of coming down the pike. So if, if they needed to buy partitions, if they needed to bring on more staff, if they needed, you know, whatever they needed to do to do indoor dining safely, um, that was where we were coming from with challenging the governor. So I think we're gonna to continue to do all of these things that we're doing. I think we're always open to ideas if our business community or residents have other things that they think we should be doing more of. Um, but it's really, really important that we keep the small business community alive in Esbury Park. We've done a lot of, I think, innovative things in terms of transportation, and I have to give credit to Mike Manzella, um, who is our deputy uh, city manager, but is also was the director of transportation. So we have put bike lanes throughout the city with the road diet on Main Street, which is going to um, slow the traffic down on Main Street. We've put a bike lanes throughout throughout Main Street. The road diet should be done in the spring of 2021. Third Ave and Fourth Ave now have bike lanes, Ocean Ave. Um, so I think we're gonna continue with bike lanes. We're absolutely gonna bring the bike share program back. Um, I think we're looking forward to bringing the scooter program back. We've put speed bumps on third and fourth. And we're now looking at doing a roundabout on third and fourth to continue the kind of traffic calming measures uh, to stop the speeding couple of things the city's doing to work on improving the relationship with uh, citizens and the police. And, and there's three things that we've started and then some other things that are kind of coming down the pike. But some of the things that we started was the 
Police Athletic League, where the police officers interact with youth and, you know, coach teams and, and hopefully start, you know, really working on those relationships. The second thing that the city of Esbury Park and is the only place in Monmouth County that is participating in is a state program on crisis intervention training. Um, meaning in certain situations, crisis, there'll be specific crisis intervention police officers that are, you know, brought out to kind of talk down a situation. And the third thing that we've done is developed an equity committee that is, we appointed last when uh, we appointed last night, and that's really gonna look at police reform. We're gonna evaluate police policies and make recommendations on how, you know, those policies could be better for our residents in our community. I think we're gonna, you know, increase our community policing. One of the things that, you know, when we were elected in 2013, and, and, and certainly we wanna keep moving in 2020 was community policing car uh, police officers not in cars but outside of cars and um you know really getting to know the community we also all of our cops wear body cams which i think you know helps with transparency and seeing what's happened at certain incidences and we got rid of our street crimes unit which was a um a unit that's been turned into a quality of life unit um so those are kind of some of the things that we've worked on to to hopefully mend some of the relationships in the community with the police department and again you know similar to before we're always open to suggestions for other ideas on you know ways that um the police department and community can work together and i and i want to be really crystal clear that the police department welcomes that kind of input